Hello everybody, how you doing? Welcome to my channel. My name is Jessica, if you're new here. I'm doing pretty good myself, thanks. I'm excited because today's my pin those eyeshadows update and I get to roll in a lot of new shades today, more than I have in a while. So we've got some excitement coming forward. How could you not know that pan those eyeshadows is an eyeshadow panning project where you're trying to hit the bottom of a metal pan in an eyeshadow? A lot of people, like in my life at least, don't even know what panning is. When I talk about panning, they're like, what what is panning but i know that you're here because you know what panning is and it's this silly little addiction that helps us to use our makeup and not buy new things that we don't need or try to resist buying new things that we don't need because you know you have to do it every once in a while just to you know give yourself some amount of pleasure it's really easy to get sucked in but i'm trying not to and this project helps out with that i always have the creator of this project linked in the description box and everybody has kind of changed the project over the years to meet their own needs i have my own personal parameters for this project of course i'm trying to hit pan on these eyeshadows but i also have the goal of using them at least 30 times and over three months of use so if i don't hit pan on the item and it's been in my project for a total of three months and i've used it 30 times i will then give myself permission to roll out that eyeshadow and bring something new and fresh into the project. This really works well for me because it ensures that I'm most likely going to hit pan on most of those eyeshadows and the few that I don't hit pan on they're just a lost cause anyway. So I'm going to go through these shades one at a time. I'm going to show you progression videos. I'm going to tell you how many times I use them and then I'm going to share with you a lot of makeup looks. I actually have some fun makeup looks to share with you and a new pan percentage and of course new shades rolling in. So stay tuned if you're interested in all that. Let's get right on into the video. The shade that's been in this project the longest is from Alamar Cosmetics. This is the Reina del Caribe palette and I've been working on the shade in here called El Malacan. And this is one of those rare occasions where I've actually kept an eyeshadow in this project for more than three months because I hadn't met that 30 use goal. So I don't have the footage from what this was looking like when I had first rolled it in. That is the last piece of my missing footage of 2023 so you don't get to see that but here's what it was looking like during the second month this was after four uses in this project in the second month i reached for it eight more times making for 12 uses total and it was looking like this i used it nine times in that third month making for 21 uses total and here's what it was looking like last month and with nine more uses to go i wasn't sure if i was going to reach pan in that time but i reached for it five more times and here's what it's looking like today and you can see that just in those five uses i did in fact hit a pan on this eyeshadow and i am really happy about that i wasn't expecting it there's nothing better than an unexpected pan it just feels extra fun I was very doubtful because these eyeshadows are very, very deep in this palette. Some of the deepest that I've encountered, but I think just because of the way that I was wearing away this shade, just a little bit more with my fingertip instead of like a small pinpointed brush, it doesn't feel as deep because the sides just aren't quite as high. You know, I'm wearing it down more gradually. So I got there in 26 uses and that is another pan I get to add to my pan percentage. I love playing with this green. This is my favorite green in the palette. Let me swatch it for you. I can't believe I haven't done that for you yet sorry so there is a malacan in the swatch and it is just so reflective beautiful sage color quite subtle for when you want it to be and adds a nice punch as well love playing with it loved having this palette out for a good four months and i'm happy to return this back into my eyeshadow collection this is the last boxy charm eyeshadow palette that has been able to hold on in my eyeshadow collection and that's because it is such a good one the shades in here are great great quality um the mattes are beautiful pigment as well blendable i haven't reached for them much i think i might have dabbled into the yellow and the orange once or twice but let's be honest i am not keeping this palette for the mattes no 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 and i'm not one to like take apart palettes it just is too sad to me so i'm not gonna do that <laughs> The next shade is from my Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams palette, and I'm actually working on two eyeshadows in this palette right now. I rolled in another one last month, but we're going to talk about the first shade first, Twinkle Twinkle. It's a very beautiful, like, sherbet orange color. Here's what Twinkle Twinkle was looking like when I first rolled it in. In the first month, I reached for it 11 times, and it was looking like this. I reached for it 12 more times in the second month, making for 23 uses total, and it was getting a little bit of a dip on it. Here's what it was looking like last month. And I just had seven more uses to reach my 30 use goal. And I did in fact get those seven uses, making for 30 uses total. And here's what Twinkle Twinkle's looking like today. 
and you'll see we do have a good little dip going in there, but nothing close to a pan. I have pan on the shade next to it in Peach for the Stars, and you can see they're pretty shallow pans. So I think if I reach for this maybe like 10 or 15 more times, I'd be able to hit pan on it, but I was ready to move on with it. Maybe I'll hit pan in that more organically in the future. I just wanted some variety into this project, so I'm happy to roll this out, even though I haven't hit that panning goal. I had fun playing with this in a more peachy way, but I also incorporated it into a lot of neutral looks just as like kind of a more orangey warm transition shade into more brown shades so kind of camouflaged it a little bit that way and that's mostly how we got the use on it so that shade is going to roll out but this palette's not going anywhere because we have another shade in here that I'm working on I'll get back to that one soon but Twinkle Twinkle is rolling out without a pan but we got some love on all the same. And here's a swatch of Twinkle Twinkle for you. You can see it's quite pigmented. It has a really nice white base that really helps that orange color to pop on the eye. And I'm really happy with the quality and the performance of this eyeshadow while I was in my project. The next eyeshadow is from ColourPop. It's one of their Super Shock shadows. And this is the shade Coconut, a beautiful metallic blue shade. Here's what Coconut was looking like when I first brought it into this project in August. I only reached for it two times during the first month. Here's what it was looking like after those two uses. And I really made an effort to reach for this more than two times in the past month. I reached for it four times, making for six uses total. And here's what Coconut is looking like today. And as you can see, we do have a small little pan on there. I was just dabbing into this very gently with my fingertip and dabbing it onto the eye that gave me plenty of color payoff just using it that way. But I tried to experiment with it a little bit and I actually was able to use a brush to really like pack the pigment into the in-between spaces of those bristles and put it on my eye with a patting motion. And that worked really well with this type of formula. This formula does not work well just like swiping it with a brush. You really have to like use a brush in a different way to use these more creamy eyeshadows on the eye if you, for any reason, aren't familiar with creamy eyeshadows, but that's how I decided to use this one in the last few uses, and I think that's what helped me get to the pan on it. I think if I had kept just dabbing it with my finger over and over, it probably would have taken me 15 or more uses to hit pan on this, and I'm happy that I didn't have to have it in my project for that long, because as many of you know, this has been the project of blues. I just keep rolling blues into this project over and over and over again, and they're really fun to play with. They do push my creativity, but I would like a break a little bit, and I'm not gonna get it soon because I have another blue in this project, but I, I was ready to get this bright, bright blue out of my project, for now at least. Here is Coconut in the swatch. I really have nothing to complain about because the shadow is gorgeous. It has always been and remains to be my favorite Super Shock shadow in my collection. I think at this point I only have about 10 remaining, but this is by far the best one maybe not the best one, but the best like colorful one. So there is Coconut and it's just beautiful, beautiful on the eye. And I have some fun looks to share with Coconut coming up in this video. Staying on the blue vein and getting back to the Pastel Dreams palette, I'm working on the shimmery blue shade in here that's called Pika Blue, which is just the most adorable name for a blue shade. So I just rolled this into the project last month. Here's what it was looking like when I rolled it in. I was able to reach for it six times in the past month, so not a great amount of uses, but I'm still happy with, you know, a bright color like blue that I was able to get, even six. Here's what it's looking like today after those six uses. And you might be able to see like the smallest little dip starting to form in the center. I've been using smaller brushes on Pika Blue, using it as an inner corner highlight. Actually, someone mentioned that in the comments, Sarah Webb, I think it was, and I immediately was like, well, duh, like, thank you. I can't believe it didn't occur to me sooner. So I loved it on the inner corner. It's been a beautiful little surprise, and I've had a lot of fun experimenting with it in other ways as well. Of course, pairing it with coconut, I mean, that's just a match made in heaven, a kind of a no-brainer. And this shade is so gorgeously blue, gorgeously pigmented, gorgeously shimmery. Look at that. And such a fun little quad from this past month i had a lot of fun with these shades it was a great color palette even though it like doesn't scream fall to some people like i found ways to make this fall whether they be together or in other looks like i found ways to incorporate those into a lot of fall inspired makeup looks oh no do i just dig into one of my eyeshadows i hate when i do that i did <gasps> look i got there i got daydream a little chunk there sorry honey I'll be more careful. I don't know if I'll be able to hit pan on that one in 30 uses. I mean, I've only gotten six so far, so I have a long way to go ahead. And I was able to hit pan on that shimmery orange, Peach for the Stars, 
within my pan those eyeshadows so it, it should be possible although that was a much more neutral shade that I could kind of hide in a lot of other more neutral looks so we shall see and this brings me to the last shade in this project for this month. This is Rose Quartz from Hitty Beauty, and I've been working on the shade Cherished. So that's a very, very pale pink shade. Here's what Cherished was looking like when I first rolled it in last month. And I'm happy to say I was able to reach for this shade 13 times. And here's what it's looking like today after those 13 uses. And I think you'll definitely notice a disturbance in the pan, but it is not very low of a dip yet. This is definitely a much more powdery eyeshadow compared to other mattes that are so firmly pressed into this palette. For example, I used Radiate here 30 times in my Pano's Eyeshadows project, and you can hardly tell. I feel like Cherish looks more used than even that one does, but still the dip is not very deep. I think I will have a nice dip for you by the next update. I'm gonna keep using using it in the same way that I expect to have a high number of uses for this next update as well. The shade's a little bit too frosty pink for me to enjoy it as a transition shade. It's just like too cool tone compared to the rest of my skin and like I feel like it just kind of stands out too much. So I'm not loving it for that but I have been using it just as an all over lid setting shade. And I think a more sheer application of that pink tone, there it is in the swatch, you can see how just like milky it is. And I have kind of all of these skin, so I have to be, I love pinks on my eye. I think it really brings out my green eyes. But when I'm using it, something like this, you know, like against my all of these skin, it really, really stands out. But if I use it like all over an area, like all over my lid, then I can camouflage it more, put a more sheer layer of it. And it does help to offset any like discoloration that I might have on my eyelids and just serve as a base for my eyeshadow look. So that's how I've been enjoying using it. For any cool tone makeup look, I'll set that down and... I expect to have close to 30 uses by the next month, but I'm gonna end up having this in my project for three months, I suspect, unless for some miraculous reason I hit pan by the next update. We'll see about that one, but that one is staying in. So this pale pink and this baby blue are sticking around for another month or two, and we're gonna roll in three new eyeshadow shades, which I'm so excited. I'm excited to get some fresh blood into this project, see what other eyeshadow palettes I can play with before this year is up, and see what color the painting gods have in store for me, what color palette, right? But first I'm gonna share with you some of my eyeshadow looks that I created using these Pan Those Eyeshadow shades. Now keep in mind that I am also doing a Pan That palette and I'm doing deck of panning and I'm doing project level up. So I'm working on lots and lots of eyeshadows. So most of these eyeshadow looks aren't gonna like be a collection of all five of these shades, but they're gonna be incorporated with shades from those other projects. I'll try and include as much information as I can remember. Deal. So this first look is an all green look. I actually shared this in my most recent deck of painting video because I'm working on the Bite Size Elf Jalapeno palette in that project. So I did an all green look, but of course I had to incorporate El Malacan. I couldn't leave El Malacan out of this all green look. So I just used this on the inner part of my lid for this look to give that extra bright green sparkle. And it's also on my inner corner of this look as well. Here is the first pink look I did of the fall season. I love pinks in the fall and winter. I don't know what it is about, especially in the winter, but I'm just kind of get started in the fall. So this has cherished as that first transition. You can kind of see where it's like close to my brow, how it's just like really bright. And I guess in the picture it looks kind of nice. It kind of like adds a highlight there. Cherished is such like a muted shade. You know, that's the last thing you're seeing when you look at this makeup look, but it's there. And that is how I typically used it in this project. This look looks like just like a brown goldy look, but I actually used El Malacan in this look all over the lid, but just like the smallest little baby amount and really sheared out. Like I just like tapped it in the center of my lid and then took a clean finger to really blend it out all over a bronze shade that was all over my lid just to give it that pop in the center. And it really reads more like a gold in this photo and in the look with those neutrals. And I'm really happy with how that turned out and how I was able to use El Malacan in another different way. This look is also incorporating El Malacan, but this time I paired it with a lot of like cool toned neutrals and cool toned browns. And then just add another like small little dab of El Malacan on the inner part of the lid really shoot it out gently and it gave me a very subtle sagey green eyeshadow look that like almost reads neutral but just a little bit different and then I also incorporated the dark green from the elf jalapeno palette as like my liner to again just like emphasize that green and make it 
pull out that green a little bit more. Here's another pinky purple look, another example where I'm using Cherished all over the transition area. This is one of my favorite looks that I did this year. Here's that pop of blue, the peek of blue. It's, it's like, it is really a peek of blue on my inner corner. And I use Twinkle Twinkle very heavily in the crease here to give it a very, very peachy eye. But I kind of toned down the peach with like some warmer browns and bronzes, but like, when my eyes are open, you can really see like the pop of peach above contrasting against the baby blue. Mwah, I loved it. And then I really brought the baby blue down on the lower lash line. And I love how that turned out. Okay, uh, this looks a little wild. Um, I was just having fun with this one. And I don't love how it turned out. But I think what I've decided is I don't like pink and blue together, unless I'm making purple, like mixing them together for purple. But every time I try to do a pink blue look, I feel like it's just too Barbie. I don't even know. I love Barbie. Like, don't get me wrong. But something about this look, like, it's just not really, it doesn't feel original. It doesn't feel creative. It doesn't really even feel all that pretty. But here it is. Maybe it's the pink lower lash line. So, of course, this look has coconut all over the lid. And then it also has pika blue to kind of add that lighter blue pop. And then the pink shades on the lower lash are shades from my Project Level Up palette, which is currently the Jackie Ina ABH palette, as well as my pink blush that I'm working on panning. Here's another look that was very subdued, but a really fun look all the same. Another pop of blue from Pika Blue in the inner corner, but just a little bit less this time. And I also brought the blue into the outer corner with coconut. That was one of my favorite ways to use coconut was just to get a little bit on my finger, kind of blend it into my outer outer corner in with those neutrals to just give it like a little different neutral twist. Like it's very subtle, subtle blue. Here's another example of me wearing it that way, but this time uh, without the pop of blue on the inner corner. Okay, this is one of my favorite looks I created this month. I was having a lot of fun with this one. This is one of the fun examples that I actually like the outcome of. So this has Pika Blue as well as Coconut. I think coconut is in this look. It's on the outer part of the lid, but I blended a purple over it, but it just kind of like just adds a little bit of extra depth. And then of course, Pika Blue is the star of this show all over the lid. I just love how ethereal this feels and I feel like a fairy princess a little bit. It was really pretty. And then this last look is another one of my favorites from this month. One of my more graphic looks. I love a blue eyeshadow look that just like screams blue. It's like the blue moment with a neutral like peachy lip in this case. And I also decided to make this like kind of a cut crease with like a very harsh line. I have that harsh kind of wing shape. Definitely have pan and coconut in this look. So I put coconut all over the lid really, really packed it on, like I said, with that brush into that shape. And then in the very center of the eyelid, right where my iris is, I put a very gentle dab of Pika Blue and then again, blended it out to get that really nice dimension and shape. And I love how it turned out. So that is all for my eyeshadow look. I'm glad I had a few more fun ones to share with you this month. I hope you enjoyed them. Now I get to talk about pan percentage. Pan percentage is just an arbitrary data point that I love tracking. It just makes it really interesting to me to like see the number get bigger and bigger and it feels very satisfying to my little ADD brain and I really enjoy it. So I hope you enjoy these numbers too. So I started off the year with a pan percentage of 12.02%. So that means of my 466 shades of eyeshadow, in my collection, I had pan on 12.02% of them. So my goal for this year was to hit 20%. And as many of you know, last month, I did in fact surpass that goal. Last month, my pan percentage was 20.6%. I had pan on 96 out of my 466 shades. So during the past month, I have two new pans from this project. Of course, I have the pan in coconut and the pan in El Malacan. But I also track pans for my other projects in this video just because this is where my pan percentage lives and I hit pan on three shades from my pan that palette the Lorac Mega Pro 2 I'll link the series here or in the description box if you want to check out those and that's five so two from pan those eyeshadows three from pan that palette so that brings my total pans in my eyeshadow collection up to 101 out of my 466 shades so my new pan percentage is 21.67 percent 
which feels really good to have five more pants after already hitting my goal. I'm really curious to see where I can get this number before the year is up. I know I have at least two more pants coming in my Pan That palette series, and we'll see how many more pants I can get in Pan Those Eyeshadows. I'm not too hopeful to have too many more because both shades I'm working on right now have a ways to go, but we'll see. Maybe I'll get to 23% or maybe over 23%. If I got close to 25, that would be pretty amazing, but that would be a lot of pans to hit in the remaining two and a half months we have in this year. So I'm not holding my breath. I'm just excited to see where I get. And that brings us to our favorite part of the video, the one we've all been waiting for. Let's roll in some new eyeshadows to work on. I can't wait to see what we get to add to these shades here. I've got my little decision maker here. Where I'm gonna select a palette and then select a shade from that palette using the random number generator. So let's see what that first palette will be. And I'm hoping I get something a little different. Let's see, I'm not looking. <gasps> Oh my gosh, the Shanixo Remix palette from BH Cosmetics. That is a throwback, but like one of my all-time favorite palettes it has like special nostalgia to it. Shanixo was one of the first YouTube creators that like got me addicted to YouTube and I'll always have a special little place in my heart for that little kiwi. Um, so yeah, let me grab that one. It already has a lot of pans in it, which is fun to say. So here is that classic oldie, but a goodie. I had the original Shanixo palette and then she came out with the Remix palette and I had to get the Remix. So this is the Remix. The original one I think was passed on to a friend or family member a long time ago. So here is what this palette looks like. This was the original side of the palette and then the remix came out with this side of the palette and I love this like dual sided eyeshadow packaging that she's got going on. So again, I already have a few pans in here. I think like five or six. I have a pan here in Dream Girl, one here in Baby Girl, and then some big pans over here. This one was just like a natural big old progression just from using this palette. That shows you how much I loved it. That's in Clarity. I also have a pan in Glow Baby right there. And then I have a pan down here in Toasted, which is a beautiful, beautiful shade. I love this shade. So that means that I have 18 shades in this palette and five of them have pans. So 13 of them are eligible to be rolled into this project. So I'm going to put in the numbers one through 13. There's a lot of like neutrals in here. So I could get something really basic and boring, but there's also like some fun pops like that purple. You know, I love purples. And like some of these shades, I just really love. Buttercup is such an easy reach for transition shade. I love terracotta as a deepening shade. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna put the numbers one through 13 in. If I get the black, I'm gonna be a little sad. I, I might reroll if I get the black. It's not a true black, it's more of like a grayish black, but all the same, I just want things to be fun in this project. I'm sure I could hit pan on a black, no problem. But again, we'll see. I might change my mind. Here we go. I got the numbers one through 13 up in the top there. Let's see. Mm -mm. Number six. Okay, I'm gonna start on the original side. Counting, skipping over any, oh my gosh, Jessica, did I do it to myself? I think I did. <laughs> okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Look what I did. I don't know what to do. I feel like I maybe should just do it. I've been using dark eyeshadows a lot to set my eyeliner. No, I'm gonna reroll. I said I would reroll and I I am gonna reroll because I have other dark shadows that I'm using and I, I would use that for the exact same reason. So I'm gonna pick in a different one. Okay, number 12. Okay, so we know that number six was that black one. So that's gonna make us flip over to the other side and count. <laughs> seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, look at that. Me talking about how much I love pinks and cool tones. And I rolled in that beautiful cool tone pink. It's called Bestie. And this will be a very easy shade for me to reach for. It's going to pair beautifully with Cherished. And I, again, like I said, I just love a pinky look on my eye. I think it's very flattering with my green eyes. Not the best for the fall, but again, I can make pink work for fall, especially like a more dusty pink like this. Like I love kind of like a cool toned look in the fall. There is Cherish and that's such a pretty shade. Oh, and it just wants to play so nicely with this baby blue and this baby pink. So welcome to the party. I'm glad I re-rolled. I hope no one's too offended by that, but you know, this is my project and these are my rules, okay? I can be saucy sometimes, my apologies. So that is the first 
friend joining the party. Let's find out what our next palette's gonna be. I'm just excited to have this palette out. Like I said, she is very nostalgic for me and there's lots of great shades in here. It's a great formula and it's a great palette. So if you have that palette and you also love it, let me know. Cause I feel like not a lot of people do. Okay, let's see what the next eyeshadow palette is. Oh, I didn't mean to press it twice. I hope I didn't. Doo -doo -doo. ColourPop She's a Rainbow, oh my gosh. Are you serious? That thing always wants to be in my project. Always, 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 always wants to come into this project. What are you gonna do? Let's grab it, it's a rainbow palette. So <laughs> we're gonna get more color to add to this party. So here is the ColourPop She's a Rainbow palette. And I've already brought a few of these eyeshadows into this project before. I hit pan on this one, this blue, and this yellow all in this project. And this pastel purple was in the project and I used it 30 times and rolled it out. In the past, I have always skipped over the glitter shades in this palette, but I'm gonna be brave and adventurous today and I'm gonna leave those in as a possibility. And you know, if I get a glitter, I'm painting a glitter because why the heck not? I just wanna try something new, leave it in the hands of the painting gods. And you know, these are such like soft, like pressed glitters that it would probably not be too difficult to pan them. And we are in the time of Halloween, like when better to have a glitter in a project. I'm gonna challenge myself to use some glitter, like why not? I could even use it on my nails if I wanted to. So before I get ahead of myself, let's just see what happens. So there are 15 pans in here that are eligible to be rolled in, including that lavender shade. I think it's called like Kittenfish, since I don't have a pan on it yet, but I do have a head start on it, so we'll see. I've got one through 15 on the top of my random number generator there, let's see. Number four. Ooh, okay, this is a fun one. One, two, three, four. Look at that beautiful green. This one is called Looking Fresh. It's kind of minty, you know, get it? Very beautiful pastel minty green shade. I love playing with shades like this. I think they add a very little something special, something interesting to a lot of looks. You can be quite versatile with them, I find. Oh my gosh, and it just looks like I am ready for spring. Looks like the Easter Bunny is coming to town, about to drop off my Easter basket. Look at this color palette so far. Oh my gosh, this is so ridiculous. I have to do a look using at least these four pastel shades. We'll see what comes in next. If it's going in the way that it has been, it's probably gonna be like a pastel purple or pastel yellow, but let's do a fun pastel look. I really enjoyed that blue and purple look I made, so this might just inspire a similar look just with slightly different color tones. So that's fun. This one has barely any use on it. I doubt I will hit pan on this. I'll have to use it 30 times, I bet. So um, buckle in for some green fall sagey looks. I think I can find some different interesting ways to use that one. So that is number two, very fun, very different. It's a challenge and that's why I love this project. It really pushes me outside of my comfort zone, which is what we all need every now and then. And if you haven't pushed yourself out of your comfort zone recently, this is your message from the universe to do so. Do something brave, do something you're afraid of, you're gonna be a better person for it. Okay, let's choose our last palette. Number three, the KVD Shade and Light. Okay, you're giving me a break with some neutrals here, huh? This palette just keeps being on the chopping block. So it's actually good to bring it in so that I can remind myself why I need it or why I like it, or if I even still like it. So let me grab that palette for us. Here is the KVD Shade and Light Eye Palette. This was such a cult classic for so long. And at this point, I have so many mattes in my collection that this is a little bit extra. Like I'm never reaching for this palette ever. I basically bring it out during Halloween time to do makeup looks because it's a palette that I can just kind of like mess around with. But I do have um, Halloween coming and it has a black in here and I'm gonna need black and white for this upcoming Halloween look. So good time to have you around. Like you came to the party just in time. So I already have pan on two of these shades. I did have a pan on this one that broke and I repressed it. I actually hit that pan naturally without it even being in a project. So I love this as a transition shade, but I have a pan on this little shade here. Oh my God, such a little tiny baby micro pan. And then another little baby teeny tiny micro pan on this 
more terracotta shade here. So Mile and Succubus have the pans. So that means of the 12 shades, 10 of them are eligible to be rolled in. If I get that black, I don't know if I'll roll out two blacks in a row. We might just suck it up and go with it, but we'll see what the painting gods have in store. So I'm putting in the numbers one through 10 and let's see what my final shade is. I mean, at least it's a neutral. They're throwing me a little bit of a bone here, although it would have been satisfying to see something, you know, all pastel on this color palette. So one through 10 is in the top there. Let's see. Mm -mm. Sorry for the glare. Number nine. Number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm re-rolling. I'm re-rolling because as you know, I'm working on my Panda palette. I'm trying to finish up the dark brown in there. I don't want anything distracting me from my Panda palette goal. I'm not gonna let it happen, okay? So we're getting another number. My second veto of the video. Don't cancel me. Stay subscribed. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, that's a fun one. One, two okay a gray toned brown it's a transition this is lazarus it can deepen it can transition it can pair really well with this color palette definitely and it is very neutral easy to reach for easy to play with i'm excited i think this is a perfect one Again, I'm glad I re-rolled it. It almost has like a purpley grazy undertone. And I never reach for these shades. And I've been challenging myself to reach for grays more because I'm working on them in my Lorac Mega Pro 2. And I'm finding that I like them more than I thought I did. I'm liking cool tones more than I thought I did. That's kind of like a recent discovery for me in the past year. So here is Lazarus. Look how beautiful that is with everything else. It's going to pair beautifully with this, what is it, fresh mint or something? clean, fresh, whatever this one is. And it also will be very fun to play with these two. I have my Rose Quartz palette out. This is going to pair well with a lot of shades in that. It is so pretty. This is just such a different fall color palette. I'm really excited to play with it. Ah, I just love this project. It is so much fun to just play with my eyeshadows, push my creativity, get use on the things in my collection. I feel like my eyeshadow collection, I really have gotten to know it over these years and it really makes me appreciate it. And I just look not even tempted by 99% of makeup releases these days. And I really am giving it to this project and all my painting projects for helping me get there. So thank you to my painting community. I appreciate you so much for being here all the way to the end. You're the best, it means so much to me. I hope you're doing really well wherever you are in the world. And I really hope to see you in my next video. Until then, bye.